time. Uh, I'm going to focus mostly on our, my uh, project I've been running, or helping found, I guess, uh, on uh, sort of a citizen science project, um, working with local communities um, along the coast and tidal areas of uh, England. So we're, we're working with them to investigate this archaeology, and I'm going to use a couple buzzwords, so I apologize for that. So I'll give you a quick primer. Um, in coastal and intertidal zone, so we're CITIZAN, which is the Coastal and Intertidal Zone Archaeology Network, because we like snappy acronyms. <laughs> so that's a heck of a background in there. And, but coast and intertidal zone, what the heck does that mean? So we know where the coast is, that's the edge that touches the sea. But intertidal zone, I'm going to use that a lot, so that just means our foreshore as well. So anything that's covered at high water and exposed at low water, or the beach is the next one. Um, and I'm going to use tidal range as well, so that's just sort of the ver different difference between um, high and low tide, but anyway, so um, in England especially, we're working there because we've got different um, sort of statutory um, coverage and so forth, so I'm going to be talking about England, so it's not to the detriment of Wales or Scotland, they have fabulous projects that are also doing this too, so one of them cherishes here as well, and so we're uh, working in Ireland as well, so there's lots of this kind of thing happening, so it's not just us doing it, but we're talking about this one for now. So, um, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, so it's not just the coast, we've got four shores so that fills in more gaps, and then mean high water, so we've got a lot of land we're looking at here. Um, and we've got eight people on staff, <laughs> so we will not be looking at all of it personally. So we have to um, look at this archaeology because it's very much under threat, and um, because it's being eroded naturally, there's no sort of mechanisms really in place other than emergency funding to get this looked at um, because it's being taken away um, sort of by the sea, by wind, by waves, etc. Um, so it's washing away without people looking at it. Um, and that's a big problem. Um, and it's that kind of missing gap, the intertidal zone here, <laughs> that we're looking at. Um, and the best way of sort of doing that, we thought, would be a citizen science approach. So working with local communities getting them really motivated about it, um, and they want to care about it, they, they care about the archaeology, then they, they start looking at it themselves. So I'll give you a quick idea of what we're looking at, just to throw in some pretty pictures before I start talking about data. Um, so we're looking at, you know, the typical subject line on the coast, so bulk vessels, um, but other sort of not, sort of atypical things, so this is a, a Atomic Weapons Research Institute uh, in Suffolk, um, so it's an old bomb uh, sort of target, um, and lighthouse, of course, so that's another coastal stuff. Um, sort of timber planks, these are pretty exciting. So this is a, you know, sort of old land use of um, sort of intertidal muds. These are possibly Bronze Age. Um, these they found, they were found by an oysterman that we work with. So, you know, not an archaeologist. It's usually dog walkers, you know, that kind of stuff when something, this exposes really rapidly. Um, so we need people who are already in these areas to be knowledgeable about these things so they can flag things up. Um, prehistoric footprints, these that get exposed, they're, they're, oh, they're exposed for a couple of tidal cycles. Um, you know, we only have a couple hours where these are exposed um, before they're washed away as well. So the, we need people to understand the recording techniques and they have to be quick because they have to be able to be done within a few hours um, before your feet get wet again. <laughs> so um, Citizen is a national network. We're not reinventing the wheel, we don't want to. Um, you know, step on anybody's toes either, because a lot of people are doing fabulous work. So we're working with a lot of partners. Um, here we're funded by Heritage Lottery Fund, which in England kind of supports a lot of community engagement stuff. So you have to have outcomes for heritage, but you absolutely have to have outcomes for people. Um, so they have to get something out of it. Um, so we're based with three um, project partners. So um, we all work for MOLA, in, um, based in London, um, Museum of London Archaeology. But we also are working, um, so we've got project partners in Council for British Archaeology, um, up in the north to do a lot of fabulous community um, work and nautical archaeology society um, in Portsmouth um, who have a, a huge um, sort of training um, I don't know, experience uh, in maritime archaeology so they're really fabulous partners to work with. Um, I'll give you an idea when I said we have eight people we um, better be close-ish to the coast otherwise we um, won't be able to um, interact with anybody directly so we're based um, we've kind of region uh, set ourselves up some regions we have little offices based um, up in the north, so Council for Archaeology, that's um, Megan and Andy. Me uh, Andy's here today, if you want to go hang out with him later. And we've got some in the south, so that's Lauren and Alex, and we've got Sheree's as well. And um, Lara and Ollie in uh, London. So again, we can kind of mobilize ourselves to um, work with these communities. So let's get to the good stuff. So 
Um, we sort of do a set of citizen science, that's a kind of buzzwordy thing recently, um, but we're trying to follow the um, sort of, like as suggested by maybe Hackley, the sort of levels of participation. So it's not just engagement, like this would be engagement, hello everyone, I'm talking to you right now, <laughs> but um, it's not just that at you engagement. So there's like level one, getting crowdsourced data, level two, working with groups, level three, like collaborative research aims, and level, level four, like full blown participatory research, community led, um, you know, with advice from professionals. So that's the kind of thing we're aiming for, a sort of spectrum of collaborative work. Um, and we're doing that by raising awareness, because if they don't know that footprints are there on this particular beach, no one's going to see them or record them or keep an eye out for them. And uh, we work in you know, sort of areas of like peat shelves and so forth, and if you don't tell people that you don't find, you know, you might find lithics in situ, for instance, and, you know, you say that to people and they, the next day they actually start seeing them. So it's not that they're not there, they just don't know what to look for. Um, and then we do that also by going the next step and training people how to recognize things, but also how to record things. So that the data comes back and it's not just a picture um, on their phone, but it's a bit more detailed, a bit more interesting. Um, so it's way of preserving my record. Um, we can't really leave it in situ so much because it gets battered by the sea, so we need something else, preser preserving by record. Um, and again, with the collaborative working, we don't just crowdsource the data from people and say thank you very much. We encourage active um, sort of research with them and give them spaces to disseminate their own research as well. Right, um, so our network, we've <coughs> engaged uh, 7,000 people. Um, and that's through a variety of different ways, but um, conferences, outreach programs, uh, guided walks, things like that. Um, a thousand people have attended one of our training sessions, which is pretty certainly not one. <laughs> a variety of training sessions. Um, and we have 1,600 um, registered users of our app, which I'll be talking about right now. Um, so, so we do sort of the traditional um, community archaeology stuff. Um, I say traditional, we're looking at a shipwreck right now, but um, you know, that kind of uh, offset planning, so forth, getting people used to the environment, because we want to encourage confidence in working in these environments, and safety in working in these environments. Uh, but we're going to be quick about it. So this is our um, smartphone app. It was developed by the same people who did the Sharp app, if anyone is aware of the Scottish Coastal Heritage at Risk program. So that's the same one. It's the same standardized recording system, so it's just because the statutory stuff stops at the border doesn't mean that the archaeology stops at the border. So we've got to work together. Um, and I'll give you a quick whizzy one. So we've got an interactive website that does the same thing. So people aren't, they, you know, don't like the tablets, don't like thing, you know, using a phone. You can use your computer. Um, it looks like this. So you can zoom in on a site. Then it shows you some dots. You can click a little dot, and it tells you about the site. And you can edit the information if it's incorrect or um, then if you are zooming in it, like as a gazetteer, and you don't see the thing you're looking at, um, <coughs> you can add a new feature. So there's a few things, you know, putting a nice description in, we provide a lot of guidance for people so, you know, it's less scary, and they provide the right kinds of descriptions. Um, but it's, again, it's sort of free form, it's whatever they've noticed. Because um, they're probably going to be the only person that sees it, so we want to get good information. Um, they can take a photo. You guys might have noticed a little photo scales along here. So again, encouraging archaeological photos rather than tourist photos. So it has a scale in it at least. Or you know, if you don't have that, put your dog in the photo and then say, "My dog is." Because you know, <laughs> then you have a scale as well. So you know that kind of thing. Sort of thinking outside the box. At least you've got something that's um, archaeologically useful. Um, if you take period, it's really base level stuff because you didn't want to throw in you know, upper Paleolithic or something, because, no, you know, is, are the average punters going to know, is, oh, is it going to be this date without some serious scientific dating behind it? So it's really basic level stuff, but then there's a, a comment box underneath that you can add in more information. Um, uh, so how visible it is, what we're really recording is visibility, because that's sort of our proxy for coastal change, um, or something like that. So is, can you still see it? Is it very visible, or is it kind of broken, or is it not visible anymore? And is it not visible because it's been washed away? Is it supposed to be there? That kind of thing. So to give you an idea of what kind of numbers we're looking at, we've only been running since 2015. 
Um, and we've got a sort of thousand new features coming up. Um, some of those are just things that weren't on there, you know, sort of quite modern things or peers or something like that, which are already on the list. Um, but um, so 600 features have been updated, like slightly typos, you know, editing, that kind of thing, or dots being moved slightly. Um, we've got 1,500 new survey updates, so that's kind of the event data, so the, the act of like the watching brief of watching this thing, taking the picture. Uh, yes, it's still there. Ding. Um, and uh, yeah, that's sort of two and a half uh, thousand new photos. So, um, and to ease people's minds, we do have a moderation process in place, and this all this data goes through the ADS and then out to um, local authorities. So this actually goes straight into, um, you know, the sort of systems of knowledge out there. So they're really contributing something. And to show you, you know, you don't want to say talking about people. So get some words from folks that we've talked to about this. Um, and the kind of key things are that it's that value again, but not the value that we get from people. It's not exploitation. It's their value from what they get out of us. So it's they feel that they're involved in something that's actually kind of useful or it's fun. Um, so that's good. <laughs> Phew. Um, that's that's the aim anyway. Uh, again, we have analysis and dissemination. So it's not just citizen uh, data collection. It's citizen science. So at the end of the scientific method, you know, you've got to tell somebody about what you've been doing. So we have a conference every year that um, is kind of the papers from academics, um, professional archaeologists, uh, coastal morphology specialists, whatever, but also our volunteers to get a chance to sum up their work, including this. So that's a volunteer from uh, Isham talking about work uh, at the local church, doing a built heritage assessment um, under his own undertaking. Uh, we also have a blog. I mean, everyone's got a blog, it seems like, but you know, it's really good because you get to talk about it and it's not just one person's view of what's happening. Um, so we've got lots of volunteer um, supplied blogs and they take their own images and that kind of thing. They have to send it to us to put on, but that's easy enough. Um, so the, I'll talk about our digital toolkit again. It's all sort of rapid recording techniques. So um, we do uh, 3D modeling and photogrammetry because that's um, quite, it's much more sort of financially viable, you know for little community projects. Um, but we use it not just as a recording tool, because of course that's really useful, and you can measure through structure, through motion, that kind of thing. Um, but we use it as a sort of way of doing a remote guided walk, so it's raising awareness of the sites, because they are dangerous to get to sometimes, or um, <coughs> really far away for a national project. And this is good. In East Sussex, it's a World War I U-boat. Doesn't look like that, I promise, but it's the front of the boat here. And that's a little torpedo tube. Um, but you wouldn't know that looking at it because it looks like a big rusty chunk of metal, but we have little annotated dots on it. So if you click one of those dots, it tells you what you're looking at. So it's stuff like that. It's kind of how we have really interesting stories to tell, like all the people in this room. Um, and people won't hear them because it's a story about people. <laughs> so they really will care about it. Um, and yeah, that's the easy job. We just have to know how to tell people in an interesting way. Um, and we also use 3D photogram uh, photogrammetry to compare change um, over time. And we use these for, oh, for photos that people supply themselves. So, um, so we have guidance on our website um, on how to take photogrammetry. You can take um, the pictures for this model for about 10 minutes to take. Um, and then as you drop box them to us, we have the processing power to do it. And then we can make a model. Um, and we provide guidance on the use of research questions we have. So it's not just wasted effort. Um, but this one's actually quite interesting, I promise. It's just bricks. <laughs> it's a brick, uh, brick kiln that um, is now in the intertidal zone. It didn't used to be, of course, because that'd be silly. Um, but it's being battered um, down at Brown Sea Island every day, twice a day. Um, this was it, so that's 2015. You can see it's, it's a pretty terrible shape, but it's still mostly articulated. Uh, this is the next year. So um, things change really quickly in this really dynamic environment. And so tools like this, where drawing every single brick would be an absolute nightmare mm -hmm. uh, in two hours, uh, well, two to four. Uh, and that would be, it would be a risk that would be absolutely untenable, you know. So these, this is the kind of tools that are really, really useful for the dynamic environment we're in, but also that people find it really cool. You know, that's, I made that model, I took those pictures. So people really like that stuff. 
and we like it too. So uh, I think it's kind of keeping in mind motivations, I guess is the sort of final statement of mine, and I think that's my last slide. Oh my gosh, yes, I did. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions, I, I, I'm around, and I'm pretty loud, as you can hear, so you'll probably find me uh, where I'm standing. But yeah, and you, um, we should have an email on um, our little um, cards as well. So we'll keep you getting. Thank you.